When I think about among animal variants in the context of this experiment, it really means variants associated with genetics as well as permanent environmental variants. And the way my nutritional brain thinks about that is, you know, the things that happen in that cow's life that changes her trajectory from the, that moment all the way on through the time of lactation. So that's how I think about among animal variants. Hello everyone, this is Luis Ferrero, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. And today uh, we'll have a discussion with Dr. Edison Carroll, Research Coordinator uh, at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Uh, first, Edison, thank you very much for joining us and share a little bit of your expertise. But before we, we go there, could you please give us a brief background about yourself? Addison Carroll. I recently finished up my PhD here at UNL working with Dr. Paul Kononoff. You know, my focus has always been on energetics, but particularly examining sources of variation and energy utilization of dairy cattle. So tell us more about what sparked this interest in this topic. Yeah, so that's a great question. So what really sparked it is there's a review in 1985 that was put out by Dr. Dale Bauman. And in that review, it's really interesting. He looks at sources of variation in energy utilization of lactating animals, and he kind of parses it out into saying this is a high amount of among animal variation or low amount of among animal variation, depending upon you know, the energetic factors such as dry matter intake, nutrient digestibility, lactation and maintenance. And ultimately, in this review, there's not really data to back up those, you know, kind of calculated thoughts about high versus low. And so ultimately, that led Paul and I to want to really back that up with some numbers. Oh, absolutely. It's always great when people can confirm some of those theories uh, with properly conducted research. So tell us more, what does among animal variants mean in the context of this experiment, but also in a, in a more general context uh, to other researchers uh, trying to understand this area. So when I think about among animal variants in the context of this experiment, it really means variants associated with genetics as well as permanent environmental variants. And the way my nutritional brain thinks about that is, you know, the things that happen in that cow's life that changes her trajectory from the, that moment all the way on through the time of lactation. So that's how I think about among animal variants. And obviously, this is very important to uh, your own experiment and other researchers trying to understand the same area. But if we try to uh, translate that into how important this would be for producers or for their nutritionists working in the field, how does that affect them? Yeah, I think we can use it as a tool to make decisions in our herd, right? Where are genetics going to be most valuable or where is nutrition going to be most valuable in improving the efficiency of our animals? And really, we're targeted focused in this paper on among animal variants, but there are other factors we look at. So guide us a little bit more through this study. Like, what did you test? What are some of the key results uh, that you found? And, and tell us, is there anything surprising about what you found? So with this experiment, we actually used a very large energetic data set that we have here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. It had over 560 lines of data from over 115 animals total, right, through crossover designs predominantly. And with that, we were able to take a, what we call a random effects model, and we were able to say, this is the random variation associated with cow, treatment, experiment, and then residual. And then ultimately, we were able to take those pieces of variance and divide them by the total variation in a specific measure, say, for example, gross energy, and then look at the amount of variance just due as a percentage to animals. And ultimately, what we did is we walked through you know, the energy balance, right? Gross energy, digestible energy, metabolizable energy, net energy, as well as all of the energetic losses in terms of feces, urinary energy, methane energy, milk energy, heat energy, right? So we're able to see how much does animal actually contribute to the variation in these measures. 
And ultimately, what we observed was that for dry matter intake, of course, it had high among animal variants. And we thought and we speculated that that was going to be, you know, a key driver in a lot of our kind of energy measures, right? And so we looked at the energy measures, these energy losses, feces, urine, methane, heat, and milk. And we said, okay, are they high or low among animal variants? So for example, feces was high among animal variants. But then what we did is we expressed them per unit of dry matter intake, saying how much of the among animal variants in these specific areas or these energetic losses were associated with just that piece of among animal variants and intake. And ultimately, what was kind of not surprising to us is that things like feces, urine, milk, and heat all decreased in their among animal variants when expressed per unit of dry matter intake, meaning dry matter intake played a role in that among animal variants piece for those outputs. However, the most kind of surprising one to us coming out of a nutritional type data set was that methane energy at first was high among animal variants by itself, but then it became even higher when we removed this influence of dry matter intake. And in my mind, that's really interesting because as a nutritionist, once again, I think methane relates to dry matter intake. Thus, we should see a similar response to say fecal energy meth or urinary energy, et cetera. Um, but we really didn't, thus highlighting kind of what geneticists have been saying for a while in terms of that genetic component in methane production of these animals. Ivonic Animal Nutrition is committed to ensure food security and safety while reducing the ecological footprint of animal farming. Its products and services use evidence-based solutions that seek to promote animal welfare and reduce reliance on natural resources. All this is underpinned by long-standing industry partnerships and deep customer understanding. Ivonic's focus on efficiency, sustainable, healthy nutrition, and collaborations with livestock farming partners creates value for customers and consumers. And I think that, uh, you know, this will highlight very well what some of researchers are trying to accomplish now and try to select animals, not only for, you know, residual feed intake or milk production, but also methane emissions, because absolutely, and uh, among animal variants is... It's, it's kind of crazy sometimes, right? And I think it's very nice that you're able to, to showcase that and shed some light for what we actually have to do in terms of, uh, well, genetic, genetic selection in this case, right? Uh, but tell us more, what are some of the key takeaways that we can take from this research and your knowledge associated with this area and implementing the few, right? What a dairy nutritionist can think about today, or if not a dairy nutritionist, a dairy producer or any other consultant out there uh, can, can think about your study and say, hey, that's something I can use right now. Yeah. So I think one thing I didn't really highlight in my previous discussion is that you know, one of the factors associated mainly with dietary treatment was digestibilities of all of our nutrients, right? And so today on farm, your diet will influence your digestibility more than say among animal variants will. So that's something to keep in mind just on kind of a regular basis. And I know a lot of nutritionists already have that kind of at the forefront of their mind. I think another thing to consider is although some of these factors, for example, uh, fecal energy had lower amounts of, say, treatment effect, you know, they're still important. We cannot just say this is high or low among animal variants and just completely disregard those other pieces, right? This is a really complicated puzzle in terms of our animals, and we've got to give weight to all of those respective pieces. Absolutely. All great points. And I'm certain that people back home will pay close attention to that and utilize some of this information. Addison will be back in the next episode to discuss a little bit more about uh, energy in dairy cows. But next time we'll focus on maintenance. So thank you, Addison, for joining us today. And thank you at home. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. We are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.